Brian, in, in all the years, all the years you've have, you've been uh, with this organization and general manager of this team, you know, which player, you know, you have very fun memories of, you know, and uh, is, is there one that, you know, um, was here for a while, but not anymore that you kind of missed having around? Well, it's hard to, hard to pick one. Um, the one thing I can easily say is almost all the players that we've had a chance to have wear the pinstripes, 99.9% .9 are just amazing people. Clearly great players, but uh, amazing people too. You know, for for Hispanic Heritage Media Day, you know, it's easy to, to, to hang your hat on a Mariana Rivera, a Bernie Williams, but there's so many, you know, that are, really special you know El Duque I still remember when we signed El Duque and and the uh, the mystery behind um, this great international player coming from a country that you know didn't have great relations with uh, the rest of the world per se and uh, and so what would that play like so those are the to name a few but there's so many how how important it is to have an academy down in the the Dominican Republic, understanding that uh, so many so much talent comes out of the Dominican Republic. It's probably the the second uh, uh, country where most players come from. How important is that for you and for the organization? It's vitally important. Our facility in Boca Chica um, has served us extremely well in terms of our Dominican Summer League teams for the players we sign, um, as well as uh, uh, our home base for our international scouting. Um, you know, we obviously filter all the players that we sign internationally in through through that hub, and um, and we rely extensively on it. You know, uh, Luis Hill obviously is a prime example of someone we we hadn't originally signed, uh, but we, you know, stay connected with our coaching staff and our scouts down there, and we made a transaction very early in his career, and um, and it's paid off in a big way, and, and has helped propel this particular season. He has a, a legit shot to be Rookie of the Year, and he's climbed the entire ladder from the Dominican Republic all the way to the biggest stage in baseball, arguably, here at New York Yankees, so... It is part of uh, our lifeblood and one of the main arteries for our success. What moment? One special moment. That is an incredible <laughs> question. <laughs> it's hard, you know, there's been, they used to have a, a saying, you know, every year they would come up with a slogan for a season you know, to attract fans, and, and one of the seasons it was at any moment a great moment, you know, uh, essentially encouraging fans to come to a game because you may see something you've never seen before. Clearly winning world championships would be right up there. Um, if I had to pick something that just blew my mind away, might be Jim Abbott's no-hitter. You know, uh, someone that overcame a handicap to rise to the level of athleticism that you have to have to compete at the highest level of baseball, which is the most complicated sport probably to play for a lot of reasons, and to create a day where no one hits, gets a hit off of him and do it here at Yankee Stadium. It was just such a magical day and a magical moment. So that one pops out for a lot of reasons. It's hard to beat any time you win a world championship, but but in terms of an individual performance, that was very unique and special. Yeah, it, as Aaron Boone has spoken quite often about, and me recently in Chicago as well, we both have reinforced that uh, the roster at that at the time that we had was the roster we felt was the best one to go with, um, acknowledging that Verdugo has been swinging the bat much better, which he has. Um, but at the same time, you know, Jason Dominguez is in the con com conversation on a daily basis, uh, as he should be. I was asked 
also what he needs to do by some people in the media? What should he be doing differently or better? That is there anything he needs to do at AAA that he hasn't? He's not doing enough at this point. And the answer was no. He's doing everything he needs to do. We just have to have a lane available for him to get up here. So it's he's not not up here because of anything he's doing. Um, he's not at the time. He's not not up here because of there was not a clean opportunity to get up here as of yet. And we would continue to evaluate on a daily basis everything that is transpiring both up here and down in AAA. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. You good? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, you know, Monday, our conversations continued through the weekend as it had since September 1st and the days leading up to September um, and into September. And we decided to pull the trigger and uh, a lane was created and here he's, he's here now. Uh, and uh, you know, he's going to get a chance to to help us um, as Aaron Boone sees fit. The most impressive that I've signed. So we, first a homegrown, a homegrown. So from start to finish, well, obviously Robbie Cano. You know, Robbie Cano was, uh, was and is a very special person and, and an amazingly talented player. So, um, he would be my, yeah, again, I don't have a roster in front of me of all the players and we've had a lot of great ones. Some, you know, a lot of my really respect and, you know, Luis Severino's doing great things now across the, the river. Um, and he was a, a wonderful leader while I was here, but Robbie Cano, you know, um, you know, did obviously amazing things and, uh, was a big reason we ultimately won in 2009. Um, and he loved the thing I respect about Robbie, uh, great player, uh, warm heart, an amazing personality, loves the game to the point where he's still playing it. You know, they talk about people that, and I'm sorry, I know I get winded. Keep going. They talk about people that you have to tear a uniform off of. He's proving that, you know, it's for the love of the game. He truly loves baseball, and and uh, whether he's playing, you know, at the major league level, you know, in the minor league level, uh, and now more recently in Mexico, with the Diablos, where I believe a championship was won, um, he's just loves that game, and I respect the hell out of that. So, Robbie Cano, you mentioned Aaron Boone when we asked you about Dominguez, but how how hard is it to make a decision on a player, for example, like Oswaldo Cabrera? You know, he when he was playing regular, he was uh, producing very well for the team. But how how does it come about? What does it does he need to to do to be able to grab a hold of a starting position in this team? Um, how those decisions are made? Uh, it seems like for some time, some of those players they come, they impact the team, but not necessarily be, become the starter. That's a good question, Oswald. Oswaldo Cabrera is an amazing person, you know, always positive, extremely talented, can clearly play all over the field. And quite simply, it just comes down to we're charged with making decisions, comparing talents. So is he better than Gleyber Torres? The answer we come back with is no. Is he better than Volpe at short? The answer is no. Is he better than Jazz Chisholm at third? The answer is no. That doesn't mean he's not a good player, and it doesn't mean he can't be starting somewhere else in a different team. But when you're having a team of really high-end, quality, talented players, it makes it more difficult. So in in a different organization, he would be getting more opportunities. Um, With this organization, when called upon here this year in 2024 especially, he's helped us win in that win column a lot. And... uh, Something special about him is his makeup and character. He is so positive. I've never seen him down, playing or not. I've never seen him not happy with positive energy. It's always polite and good morning, good afternoon, you know, a fist pump. I'm sure he does it with the media. He does it with the front office. He does it with his teammates. And he's ready to play whenever asked upon to do so. Um, and he's accountable. You know, uh, we saw recently with the uh, didn't get back in the box in time for an important 
situation in the ninth inning when it was he got a called strike three against him because he wasn't in the box, and he stood up with the press and was accountable and and showed again who he is as a person, a high character individual. So tough decisions. Um, my job is to get as many great players as we can get, and then the manager has to decide of those collection of players who's the best to deploy on a daily basis at each position and so because of that you know um he's been a little bit more on the outside looking in but we do value him we do appreciate him and uh you know maybe maybe he'll surpass somebody and take a position at some point here um but regardless we're happy we have him and he's helping us yeah i wish he could have stayed with the Yankees you know we took a shot at him but you know just like when you get the free agency um you know Seattle offered a significantly lot more money and um so you can't blame him uh for that but he was a great Yankee um you know he had a million dollar smile even when he wasn't making a million dollars uh and although I haven't seen him recently I guarantee it smile still there um that's one thing I appreciated about him is just that positive aura he showed up with every day. I mean, one of the great hitters that you could ever see. Um, and we won a lot of games when he was wearing the Yankee pinstripes, and he was one of the big reasons why. Um, so, you know, just a really positive, impactful, high performer.